Now, how exactly these notions map onto the human brain, onto um, um, uh, functional neuroanatomy, is not entirely clear. It's been a raging debate for at least 30 years. However, there is a really cohesive framework which tries to explain these two principal um, deficits uh, using uh, the notions of the dorsal attention network, a network that is important for voluntarily in a top-down way shifting attention, and the ventral attention network, the network that is important for sort of bottom-up attention. Something suddenly shows up and you shift your eyes quickly towards it in a bottom-up manner. So the idea is the following. If a patient were to suffer damage to uh, the dorsal attention network, let's say on their left side, they would end up with a disengagement impairment, meaning if a stimulus were to be shown on the ipsilesional side, on the same side of the lesion, which would be the good side, right? Then their, their lesioned, um, their, their lesioned uh, dorsal attention network cannot pull them away from there. So they, they cannot deploy that top-down attention to shift away from that towards the contralesional hemifield, which is the bad field. So the idea is that, you know, um, because you don't have the ability to shift away voluntarily, you risk getting stuck in the ipsilesional side. Um, of course, if there's nothing in the ipsilesional side, then your, your van can, can, can grab your attention, your ventral attention network can grab your attention also in the bad field, but you cannot voluntarily move your attention into the bad field. Um, and now, the, and this also explains another feature of extinction. Remember, the dorsal attention network is bilateral. You have one on the right and one on the left. So if you get a damage to the right, you get extinction uh, the, in, in, the, um, in the left visual field. If you have a damage to the left, you get extinction in the right uh, hemifield. So this is perfectly consistent. Um, extinction can happen on either side. And, and that's because the dorsal attention network, there's one on one side and one on the other. Now, what is interesting is what happens if, you get, if a patient were to suffer damage to their ventral attention network. Two things happen. First, general arousal gets diminished and, and the, and the bottom-up reorienting system doesn't work anymore. But the key part is that the ventral attention network is actually tightly linked to the dorsal attention network on, its, on, 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 on the same side. So as a result of damage to the ventral attention network, the dorsal attention network on that side will become hypoactive, right? will, will function less. And this might be the origin of that, of that uh, interhemispheric uh, uh, imbalance, which leads to the left dan uh, dorsal attention network shifting you pathologically towards the right side. Um, and now the interesting part is that the ventral attention network only exists on the right side. There's no ventral attention network on the left side. So this dynamic can only happen with an injury to the right side. If you get an injury to the left side, it doesn't happen. So, so the, the, this, this dorsal attention and ventral attention network explains why you only get neglect with an injury to the right side, which is why we often refer to it as the left, uh, as, as the left uh, neglect. Let me just show you this in a slightly different way if it helps you visualize it better. So this is um, a healthy brain working. So maybe, you know, there's a person here and they're looking at a screen, they're searching for a target, something like that. Um, now you see pictured here, the, the left dorsal attention network, the right dorsal attention network, and here the ventral attention network, which again exists only on the right side. And if, if everything works well, you know, the brain is all gloriously active and is doing its job. On the other hand, if a patient suffers a lesion, a lesion to the ventral attention network, which again exists only on the right, it will, it will decrease, you know, it will take away the ability to reorient in a bottom-up way. It will decrease arousal, but as you can see from these arrows, it will also downregulate 
the dorsal attention network. It, it will take, it will, it will drain it in a sense. And this will result in the left dorsal attention network being powerful, being unopposed. The balance between these two networks breaks. And now the patient's whole visual field gets shifted to the right. And of course, if you add that you got shifted to the right, plus your, your, your other dorsal attention network doesn't work, so it can't shift you the other side, right? You can't, you can't disengage, then this explains extinction. And finally, the last thing I want to cover very briefly is a simultanagnosia. Now, simultanagnosia um, is a very rare neurological disorder, which is really um, characterized by the inability to perceive more than one object at a time, or at times even less than one object. I have to say some people refer to it as bilateral neglect. There is some reason for it, although it might be a slight uh, simplification, but essentially you're locked into one object and that's all that you can see. Um, it typically results from bilateral damage uh, to parietal occipital cortex, which means you're destroying bilaterally the dorsal attention network. In the sense, you can imagine it like your ability to, to shift in a top-down manner attention is entirely gone. The only thing that this patient has left is the ability, if a new stimulus shows up, to orient towards it, right? Because the ventral attention network is still working. So a stimulus shows up, the patient, wherever in space the stimulus may be, the patient locks onto it, and then the patient can shift away because both dorsal attention networks are broken. And so the patient is, is stuck on this object until some other object enter, you know, some other object catches their, their, uh, their bottom-up attention, they lock onto that, and that's all that they see. It's, 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 a, it's a very puzzling condition. Um, it typically is part, it's, it's typically is one of the symptomatology of Balint uh, syndrome, together with optic at ataxia and optic apraxia, with optic ataxia being sort of the deficit in the coordination of, of hand-eye movements. So you kind of have a, a, an inability to properly reach when it's visually guided, uh, and, uh, and, and, um, um, and optic uh, apraxia being sort of a deficit in controlling uh, the purposeful movement of the eye. But, and this too uh, has some um, cognitive features that are somewhat mysterious at times. And, and one I'm showing right up here. If you were to show the left, um, the left screen to a, to a patient who has simultanagnosia, um, they would either see this circle or that one. However, if you show them this, they will see the whole object. So just because they're connected and they, they've now gotten unified into one object, somehow objecthood is somehow preserved. So this system recognizes that this is a unitary object and locks onto it. And one, once the patient is locked onto it, can't, can't move, can't shift their attention away voluntarily. So essentially they're stuck until, you know, the next object gets, gets captured by the, um, uh, by the ventral attention network and so on. So let me just close by showing you a brief uh, film, a brief video of one such patient, just so you can see what it looks like. What do you see here? A comb. Mm -hmm. What do you see now? Comb. What do you see now? Spoon. Do you see the comb? No. Do you see the comb? Yeah. Do you see the spoon? Mm -hmm. What What do you see now? I see the spoon. What do you see now? Comb. Do you see a spoon at all? No. Okay. Can you see what? Just tell me what you see. I see what looks like a blackboard with some writing on it. Mm -hmm. And there is a blackboard with some writing right behind us. So when you lost track of what was there, you picked up whatever was right in front of you, I guess. And you can see the... 
quite remarkable, right? So the patient can only see one thing at a time, and as soon as sort of he 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 moved his eyes, um, the thing that was in front of him uh, that was captured by his ventral attention network um, was the blackbird in 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 the um, in the background. 